here again for our weekly interview with Dr. Nario. Thanks for being with us, Doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. All right. So you all know if you've watched the channel that Dr. Nario is at Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. And if you're interested in the types of medicine that they um, do there and what they treat, you can go to their website, uh, Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. It's pretty easy to find. So we're going to talk about osteoporosis. Um, so what is osteoporosis and how common is it? Well, Steve, I like this topic personally for my own mother, actually, who's suffering from this, where she recently had her hip replacement, unfortunately, and now she's trying to recover from it. So that's why there's a personal touch to this specific conversation that we're having. Well, anyway, going back to your question, osteoporosis is a medical condition characterized by weakened bones, making them fragile and more prone to fractures. The word osteoporosis literally means porous bones, like with holes. Don't get me wrong, it is not only a female's disease, but in this discussion that we're having, let's focus on them due to it happening to, to them more often rather than men. Bone is a living tissue that undergoes constant remodeling with old bone being removed and then new bone being formed. In osteoporosis, this balance is disrupted, leading to a decrease in bone density and strength. As a result, bones become brittle and more susceptible to fractures. Particularly in the in the hips, the spine, the wrists, these are the common areas that women should watch out for. Osteoporosis often progresses silently without any symptoms. So it's very silent until a fracture occurs. Fractures resulting from osteoporosis can have serious consequences, leading to chronic pain, disability, loss of independence, and even increased risk of mortality, especially in older adults. So some shocking statistics for the audience about osteoporosis. If somebody bre uh, breaks a hip, more than 50% of these women will not walk again. One half of women over 60 will have osteoporosis. And one in three women over 55 years old will have a fracture from osteoporosis. So these are the shocking statistics on how we should take this disease seriously. Okay, so you answered my question on how common is this? It sounds pretty common. Right. And the numbers are really shocking if you think about it. Yeah, that's very common and uh, not, uh, not as common for men. Uh, well, not much for men, but it does happen in men. It's just because of you'll hear about the causes in a bit. OK, so um, what um, what are the causes? Many, Steve. <laughs> well, let's focus on the common here. Several uh, factors can contribute to the development of osteoporosis, including age, number one. Bone density tends to decrease with age, making older adults more susceptible to osteoporosis. Number two, gender and hormonal changes. That's why women are at higher risk of developing osteoporosis than men, especially after menopause, due to a decrease in estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone levels. And then number three, family history. A family history of osteoporosis or fractures can increase the risk of somebody who is about to have one. And lifestyle factors, lack of physical activity, poor nutrition, smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, and certain medications such as steroids and even anticonvulsants can all contribute to bone loss. And then lastly, medical conditions, certain conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, hyperthyroidism, even GI disorders can increase the risk of osteoporosis. That is why I always emphasize it's the fire within. So it's osteoporosis is not only a disease of bones, but also a disease of the systemic system. Okay, so let's say that a person goes to their general practitioner and they've been diagnosed with this. What, um, how are they usually gonna get treated? Right. Well, Steve, if you see a conventional practitioner or a primary care doc, they will offer initially first line up biphosphonates. And these are a class of medicines commonly used to treat osteoporosis. And you'll hear the names, alendronate, resendronate, um, ebendronate, 
So they all work basically in response to preventing the breakdown of bone tissue, further breakdown, side effects a lot. You would, this is a very important side effect because if you take this, they're not going to allow you to be laying on bed, be on, 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 a, on a recline, because if it gets stuck in your throat, it's going to burn a hole. And then uh, sometimes it gets worse, like osteonecrosis or the, the jaw uh, bone just gets destroyed. Again, rare, and there are newer ones called monoclonal antibodies, which also has the same effects. That's why, again, this is something that my patients come in for and saying, Doc, maybe not that. Do we have other things? All right, so you're an integrative physician. First, define that. So integrative, meaning it's really um, definitely we need to make sure we, we tell patients about the conventional options that are out there. But at the same time, because people are so cautious about the side effects of such, is it also something that, hey, can I do this naturally? Are there things that I can use, meaning herbs, supplements, homeopathy, to address my osteoporosis without getting the side effects? So that's where we come in to integrate both worlds to make these uh, possible options for patients. Okay, so from your natural side, um, what are some of the treatments that you might offer? Again, Steve, many, but let's see, let's start with uh, the ones that I usually use in practice. I want to emphasize again, it's a metabolic disease. Not only bones are your problem, but the total picture. Find the root cause, uh, meaning nutrient deficiency, hormonal imbalances, autoimmune disease, metabolic conditions, all contributes to osteoporosis. So one common thing that I always use, and you would always probably hear, would be calcium, number one. But not only calcium, though, we're going to think about, oh, let me buy something in Costco. Let me buy something in CVS. It should be calcium hydroxyapatite. So this is uh, usually specific for bone osteoporosis, and this is the strongest one out there. And use only if no history of renal stones. So just be caught. That's why you need your doctor's help with this. Uh, just not buying stuff over the counter or online. Other minerals that you can use along with this would be strontium, for most bone formation, boron, zinc, and manganese. So minerals are not just focused on, oh, I need calcium for bones, but all these other ones that I mentioned, they all work in conjunction. Another famous one, vitamin D. It increases absorption and retention of calcium along with vitamin K, which is specifically MK7. And also both are used in, um, uh, in bone formation. Number three, one of the things that we go for, IV chelation. IV EDTA can remove bad quality calcium in the bones and let the body replace it with new ones. So creating new, um, harder and more durable bones. Unfortunately, the theme here is, again, for osteoporosis, it's hard to reverse once you have it. The most is to maintain bone in terms of what is left. So it may be even the conventional or the natural uh, ways of addressing it. The key is prevention. Okay, so you just said it's, this is something that's difficult to reverse. So all of the treatments are uh, helping you just to maintain the bone mass that you still have. So let's go to that important question. Um, how do you prevent or what steps can you take? What things can you do to prevent osteoporosis? Well, Steve, prevention actually starts. So that's why I mentioned about this talk is good for females, but also for men, hormonal, uh, hormonal therapy at the right time. Don't wait 10 years after uh, your last menstrual period, meaning menopause. Once perimenopause hits, start immediately. It, it, as we know, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone covers the bones and protects it. If you wait too long, you're actually making your bones prone to deteriorate. So that's why it's not only the reason why I tell patients, let's start on hormones for sexuality. Bone health is something that you really want to focus on as you now build this with hormone therapy. Well, bioidentical hormone therapy to be exact. And then uh, what we discussed a while ago, uh, regular weight bearing exercises, specifically weight training. I'm not saying join the Iron Man, uh, bands and light weights to give healthy stress to bone to regenerate and develop uh, also muscles to support the bone. Bone is a living tissue that undergoes constant remodeling with old bone being removed and new bone being formed. And this stress 
can be achieved through resistance exercises. Again, avoid smoking and excessive alcohol consumption, acidifying activities or, or substances that degrade bone. And then early detection of osteoporosis is through bone density scanning, DEXA scan, can also help identify individuals at risk and initiate appropriate interventions to prevent fractures. So you would see, sometimes this is where you'll see osteopenia being a finding, and that also becomes a wake-up call for, for our patients. Uh, but sometimes, unfortunately, they are not enough uh, in terms of DEXA scan findings due to fractures can still occur with normal bone mineral density findings. Wow. Okay. So um, exercise is important. Um, I mean, you said a lot there um, with how to prevent it. Um, and I know exercise is important, but I, I would say with what you just said about hormones, I always tell people go, go. And I want to know what you would say. I always tell people, go get your hormones checked early. It doesn't hurt. <clears throat> know what your baseline is, right. men and women. Because now you know um, you have something to compare it to. So is that something that you usually recommend with your patients that come in? You just have them, you want to know what their hormone baseline is? Why? So I usually, uh, well, the most common, I treat women of all ages and men of all ages in relation to their hormone balancing. But for women, they initially come to me because of perimenopausal symptoms hot flashes, you can't sleep. So this is where you're about to enter menopause and it's just hell for these women. So that's why that's the key. When you get into that stage, don't, don't just have this mentality of, oh, this is normal. Everybody went through this, it's a rite of passage. It's not, it's actually your body asking for help. Once you have these symptoms, it's actually a, something that I always tell patients, hey, your body's telling you something. You're burning up from the inside. You're burning things up, blood vessels, bones, even brain tissue. They're, they're just deteriorating. And that's why we need to abate that. And that's when uh, bioidentical hormone therapy starts for, for women. So early, uh, uh, late 40s up to like onwards, uh, people think that it's still okay even after 10 years, but you get reap the benefits of bioidentical hormone uh, therapy when you get it into your system earlier. So do you have them check it even, even when they don't have symptoms? Do you ever have people check their hormones just so that you know where they are for later? Correct. So here's the thing. Some of the patients actually shows up when they tell me that, oh, um, not only you don't have symptoms, but when you ask them, hey, I'm a, I have a little insomnia. I can't sleep at night. Uh, it sounds like I'm pretty stressed. But if you look at it, other symptoms also coincide. Oh, I have chronic anxiety. I have a little depression here and there. Nah, I take medicines for that for a long time. Now it makes it normal for them to think that I don't have symptoms. But you're right. Something objective to be seen by a patient is something that would make them turn around. Doing a, a blood test or a urine test or saliva test is always something that I always tell patients, oh, I don't think your symptoms are just caused by normalcy. Here it is. Okay, well, we had um, what a, one of our subscribers ask about osteoporosis, so that's why we did this one. If you guys have questions uh, like this uh, that you would like the doctor to cover, um, how different things are treated, what, their diff what different options are, or different um, types of illnesses, put them in the comment section, and uh, we'll, we'll get to those. So... Uh, Dr. Nario, thanks so much for being with us. Well, thank you, Steve, again for having me. And thank you for the viewer who asked uh, us to make a segment about this. So just feel free to put all your inquiries and your requests so we can talk about specific issues for you. And as we all know, that knowledge is your power to better health. And thank you for letting me provide you with it on longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.